God's, I think he's chased me down. He, he is not going to let one of his children go, amen? He is not going to let one of his true children go. Take your Bibles this morning and in the New Testament turn to the book of Romans, uh, chapter number 12, a familiar passage, one that each of us as God's people should have memorized. Uh, it's actually been one of our memory verses over the years. Two verses of scripture this morning, and many of you know already where I'm going to. I'll be there in a moment. But I want to pose a question to you this morning, and this is for everyone. It doesn't matter whether you're a young child or you're one of our senior saints. Here's the question, because we're closing out a year, and a line is going to be marked at midnight I remember where I was when 1999 turned to 2000, called it Y2K. I was standing behind one of these in another church that I worked at, preaching the Word of God when that bell struck midnight and went from 1999 to the year 2000. And uh, while I'll not be preaching tonight, today marks the end of a year and there is a line, and we began a new year. And so here's the question for you this morning, and certainly one for myself. Do you want to be better? Do you want to be better? Someone said this, and I want you to really hear me when I say this. The definition of insanity is doing the same things over and over and over again and expecting different results. Pastor Reed used an illustration many years ago, and as a young child in high school, uh, I, I never forgot it. It was given by a man by the name of Ed Markham, and he said this, If you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always gotten. What does that mean in a practical sense to you and I this morning? If you want to be better in 2024, and, you, and that means being different than you were in 2023, right? That means that there's some things that must change. We can't do the same things we did in 2023 and be better in 2024. So with that in mind, I, I want you to consider this new year uh, that lay before us at midnight tonight. We'll move into 2024. It's hard to believe. Uh, I was considering the new year this week as I was thinking about what to preach, and God led me to this message. And, and it, uh, Paul made a very honest admission in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 12. You don't have to turn there. Just listen to it. And I'm going to give you a lot of Bible verses this morning. So I hope you have your pens ready on the back of your bulletin. You can write these verses down and look at them later. But he said this in Philippians chapter 3, verse 12, Not as though I had already attained or completed or accomplished, either were already perfect. That word doesn't mean sinless perfection, but it means complete. It means mature. And he goes on in verse 13, and he further admits, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. In other words, he's saying, I've not arrived yet. I'm not where I want to be as a, as a Christ follower, as a Christian. I'm not where I want to be as a man. I'm not where I want to be uh, as a family person. What he's saying is, I've not arrived yet. And here's what he's openly admitting, and this is what you and I need to admit. You, you understand it's like with the alcoholic, the first step, and I'm, a, I'm fine with 12-step programs, but let me tell you, Jesus can deliver you instantly from alcohol. When I gave my heart and life to the Lord Jesus, all that stuff went away instantly, just like that. So I'm all for that. But the first step to making things better and making things right and getting rid of addiction is to say, I'm an alcoholic or I'm on illicit drugs or I'm addicted to this, or I'm addicted to that. That's the first step, admission. And for you and I this morning, the first step is to take a serious evaluation 
of where you are and where I am, you for you, me for me, to examine your life and ask the question, do I want to be better than I've been? Maybe here's a way to put it. Is God happy with where I am right now, or does He desire more from me as I move forward in my life? Uh, you know, someone said this, the biggest room in your house and my house is the room for improvement, amen? And so when you think about that, I, I, I don't know if you realize it or not, but you don't need a, a necessarily a new year to do better. What you need to, to be better is a new you, right? I mean, it really comes down to that. A new mindset, a realization of this is where I am, but I don't want to stay here. I don't want to camp out here. I want to move forward. I want to keep going forward. So what you need is a new you, in a sense. So every day is a new day, amen? Every month is a new month, and every year is a new year. And it's not that we need a new day. You know what you and I need? We need a new way, amen? We need a new way. So let me ask you this question. Don't you desire joy in your life? Amen? I do. Joy, peace. Somebody asked me, what do you want for Christmas? I said, peace on earth, goodwill towards Rick for one day. <laughs> peace. Success. There's nothing wrong with desiring success. Amen? I want to be successful for the Lord Jesus. I want to be successful as a Christian. Uh, and if God sees fit to bless that in other ways, then that's between me and God. And ultimately, it's God's decision. But there are many a poor people in the Bible that, that were miraculous, uh, miraculously convicted of who they were in Christ and served the Lord Jesus to a fault. And yet, God didn't see fit to bless them in all financial ways or even in health. But I'll guarantee you one thing, they're blessed in heaven. Amen? That's what Paul, the Apostle Paul said. And he was, he was beaten down, his body was broken. He had been through many, many things and probably in much worse shape than any of us. And he said, you know what? I'm, I'm not there yet. God's still working on me. And, and he would later write, my goal is one thing, to hear him, uh, the Lord say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen? So I want you to think this morning about you as a Christian, us as a church, and then all of us as a community. But we, understand, we need to understand that things don't happen by accident. Those things come by getting some things right. So if you want to be better, you've got to change some things in your life. You want to be a better student, teenager? Then you've got to change some things in your life. You've got to turn the Xbox off, you've got to turn the TV off, and you've got to study. Nothing just comes by osmosis. I sit there and soak it up and all of a sudden I'm super smart and I have this great education. No, that education will be good for you, but it requires work. Believe me, I got nine years of college and none of it was fun. I mean, I met some great people and God allowed me to do some, some pretty cool things and I am where I am today because of God's blessing that. But let me tell you, it was hard, especially at the beginning or in the middle where you couldn't see that light at the end of the tunnel and you think, man, I, I just don't want to do this anymore. I just want to do something else. It'd be easier. But you stick with it and you, and you keep going. And every day you do it by the grace of God and for God and you want to be the best that you can. You know what God hates? I believe mediocrity. Hate, God hates lukewarmness. He said, I'd rather you be cold or, or, or hot but not lukewarm. That's mediocre. That's just eking through life. I don't want to eat through life. And I don't want my sons to eat through life. I want them to be champions for Christ, amen? And that only comes through, through desiring to be better a little bit more every single day for the Lord. But I'll tell you, change is difficult, amen? I realize I need to change some things in my physical life. But it's, it's hard. It's hard. I, w I got up the other morning and I was not feeling well. My blood pressure was 158 over 105. My heart rate was 103. I woke up that way. I'm like, why am I feeling so bad? I went ahead and got ready, went to work like good men do. I went to my job, didn't feel like going, but I went. And I'm sitting there not doing anything. My Apple Watch is like sending out SOS messages. Your heart rate's too high. It's in the 130s, almost 140 at one point. So I call my wife. 
because I'm thinking, do I, need to, do I need to go to the hospital or is there something I miss? And I said, did I take my heart pill uh, this morning? And she said, no, I ran out of it. I'm going to get it and bring it to you. I was like, oh, that, that's what that makes sense. She's trying to collect on my insurance, folks. I'm, way, I'm worth way more dead than I am alive, by the way. But you know what? The truth of the matter is I need to be healthier. I, uh, it's hard when you've had a hip replacement and you need a knee replacement to be thin and, you know, muscular. Uh, you know, I, but I need to lose some weight. You know what that requires? Some hard life decisions. And when you're busy, when you work 10 hours a day, 12 hours a day, you come home and you know what? You just want to soak up the carbs and sit in your easy chair and go to bed, right? But I need to make some changes. And maybe you do too in your physical life. You know what? Uh, turning over a new leaf is one thing. Maybe you've gone through programs. Maybe you've gone through counseling to help you change, but you've not been able to change. You know what, I, I want to show you from the Word of God this morning that change is possible. Before I do, I want to share with you a story. Uh, there was a, and I shared part of this with you, and, and I won't say the name because I don't want to embarrass her, but uh, someone invited one of our teenagers to church. There's another Baptist church just up the road here, and she goes, no, I'm going to my church. And so the, that other person decided to cuss her out. Boy, that, what a testimony for that church. But, uh, and uh, and our, our teenager, who's just a wonderful sweetheart, said, you know what, you're lukewarm. <laughs> and she was being very nice when she said that. There's a lot more things I could say about somebody cussing me out because I won't leave my church to go to their church. But anyway, she said, you're lukewarm. Well, it kind of become a thing. And, and uh, several weeks later, uh, Cullen was messing with her, and he says, you know what, you're lukewarm. And she goes, no, I'm not. And then she goes this, one of the most profound things I've ever heard come out of a teenager's mouth. She goes, well, I am, but I'm working on it. Whoa, you know what, if every one of us admitted that, you know what, I am lukewarm, but I'm working on it, how God could work in that environment, amen? You know, you come to church one way, but I'll tell you what, you can leave in a different way if you want to, amen? So let's look at our text this morning, get in the message and see how, how far we go. Now pray for me while I'm preaching because I was up all night, I don't really feel great this morning, uh, got some stomach stuff going on, so please pray for me if you would, but Romans chapter 12 verse 1 says this, and we should all have it memorized, but let's read it, uh, I beseech you therefore brethren, Paul's writing here, I beseech you therefore brethren, I'm begging you brothers and sisters in Christ, by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So we're talking this morning about being better in 2024. And let me give you some of the steps that need to happen in your life if you're to be better in 2024. You see, the first step to becoming or getting on the path to the be being Better is this, you must have experienced a genuine salvation. A genuine salvation. I was talking to a, a man, uh, and we were talking guns, and, it, and I always try to get it to uh, talk about the Lord Jesus. It was late, we were about to close, and a little boy was there, and it, we were talking about just the world in general and guns and all of that, and it led to how he's homeschooling his child and and so I, I said, have you tried the Becker curriculum? And we use that with Cullen when we homeschool him. And I, I said, i got to be honest with you, if there's any way possible, if I had little kids today, I wouldn't have them in the public school, even though I've been a teacher. Uh, the stuff in there, even the stuff at the base foundational level, it's written into the books. It's all woke garbage and cultural uh, change that they're trying to uh, manipulate into the hearts and minds of these little children. But we got to talking. And it was really cool because the little boy, he, the dad said, yeah, my son, and, and I think he's probably eight or nine, he got up in church the other day and just walked down the aisle by himself and told the pastor, I want to give my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I was like, high five, buddy. And he gave me a high five with a big smile on his face. And my heart, man, just sh shouted for joy. Because you know what? That's a genuine salvation. That's the way we all come to Christ, like a little child. He heard the word of God. And while it was perhaps in a church that I would not agree with doctrinally on a bunch of things, he heard the word of God and said, I want to give my life to Christ. Amen? 
And I, and I told him on the way out the door, I said, buddy, I said, just remember, and dad too, that salvation is by Christ alone and faith alone in Christ alone and nothing else. It's not in baptism, it's not being a part of a church, and it's not, it's not shaking a pastor's hand. It's what you did with your heart that day towards the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? And Paul says it right here, talking about a, a genuine salvation. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. Now, where he says beseech right there, uh, where Moses commanded, Paul exhorts. And this word is used 50 times in the Pauline epistles. What's he saying for uh, and then therefore is the third important therefore in this epistle. Uh, Romans 5, 1 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God from the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 8, 1, There is therefore now no condemnation, amen, to them which are in Christ. Remember last week I told you there's in, in to, on to? There it is which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. So the therefore of chapter 5, what does it do? It sums up the, what preceded in the first four chapters. And then the therefore in chapter 8 sums up the first seven chapters of the book. And then Romans 12, 1 sums up the first 11 chapters. I beseech ye therefore. And any time you see the word therefore, you've got to see what it's there for. Somebody was telling me yesterday uh, that these, uh, it was actually my boss, and he was telling me that there's these people going around saying that we should all be smoking marijuana because of some passage in Ezekiel, and he gave, I think it was 34, 29 or something like that about an herb or something like that. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to look that up and see what that is. Maybe I'm missing something here. So I get to reading about it. Well, it's Ezekiel's prophecy of the millennial reign, and it's talking about the shepherds, that, uh, the leaders of Israel that would not take care of the people, would not protect the flock. They were eaten, they were being fattened, but the, the, the flock was starving. And, and so God's going to punish the shepherds, and God's going to bless the people, and ultimately he was talking about the millennial reign. And, and when one of the seed of David comes and sits on the throne... He's going to be the good shepherd, amen? And so they were taking the whole thing out of context. You know what, what I found? He, that one verse, we can come up with any number of things. I can take one verse and, you know, do whatever I want to do. But I, what I did, I read the verse before it, the verse after it, and I said, hmm, I'm going to read this whole chapter. I read the whole chapter, and then immediately God spoke to my heart and said, this is what this is about. And so anyway, we got to understand when we see the word therefore, we've got to see what it's there for. And he says, I beseech you, therefore, he's summing up everything he said in the first 11 chapters by the mercies of God. Now notice it's mercies, plural, and not singular. No other inspired writer except David knew the plural mercies of God like Paul did, I believe. And the mercies of God is what Paul has been talking about in these first 11 chapters. Let me point it out to you. You can jot it down. I'm moving quickly. Romans 1.1, 1, 1, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. Romans 1.16, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. And then verse 17, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. And then Romans 3, what are we talking about? The mercies of God. Romans 3.24, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. And then he goes to chapter 4 and verse 7, saying, Blessed are those whose iniquities are forgiven, amen, and whose sins are covered, amen. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. What is he saying? Blessed is the man or the woman that God does not look at you and see all your sin, but rather sees the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're talking about a genuine salvation. And so he goes on in, in chapter 5. Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And then of course you know Romans 5 and verse 8. But God commendeth his love towards us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And then Romans 5.19, we use this in the Christmas story. 
For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one, that's Jesus, shall many be made righteous. And then Romans chapter 8 and verse 1, There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. And then uh, verse 35, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded, he says, that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in, there it is again, that word in, Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. So what are we talking about? The mercies of God, plural. And then Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And then uh, chapter 11, verse 33, what are we doing? We're summing up until we get to chapter 12. I beseech you therefore by the mercies of God, plural, O oh, the depth of riches both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are His judgment and His ways past finding out. Mercies of God. You see, listen. We've got grace, amen? That's God doing for us what we could never do for ourselves. That's Jesus dying at Calvary, a sinless, per perfect Son of God that we were not, amen? And that was the requirement to pay the price for the sins of mankind. That's grace. That is God doing for us what we cannot do for ourselves. God's mercy is God not doing to us what we deserve to have done to us. Every sinner deserves to be punished. Amen? I had a customer this week, and man, I could tell that their son, who's a teenager, was the only child, and I went in there and went in the office, and Todd was sitting there, and I said, I said, man, that kid needs his honey wore out. He was a little jerk. His parents were buying and doing things for him, and he was, I said, you know what you owe you, them now? And he goes, what? I, I said, thank you, you know. And he had no clue. Listen, we owe God a big thank you for grace and for mercies, plural, amen? You know what? And I'll tell you what, when you think about all that God has done for you, if that does not provoke gratitude in your heart, then my friend, I don't think you're saved. I don't think you're saved. And I realize our lives are very busy, and we've got all these distractions that we allow in our lives, by the way. Listen, you don't have to do anything except die and pay taxes, right? No, as a Christian, you have to, to serve the Lord Jesus and please Him, amen? That's our reasonable service as we're going to see. So if, if you want to change in 2024, I say let it, let it start now, amen? This change needs to start by allowing the Lord Jesus Christ to get in you and to change you, amen? That's the power of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen? And you'll, you'll not be who you used to be then. You'll not act the way you used to act. You'll not say the things you used to say. What will you be? A new creation. And you'll have a new life. So what do we see? Uh, the evidence that we've experienced a genuine salvation is secondly seen in the fact that there is a giving demonstration. Now go back to uh, chapter 12 and verse number 1 if you would please. I beseech you therefore, I beseech you therefore, Brethren, by the mercies of God. Amen? That's what God did for us. Here's what we do for God. That ye present. You know what that means? What does it mean to present? To show. To show. How's the, what's the, the most simple, easiest thing that we should do and we should never let anything or anyone come in between us doing this? We should show up. Present your bodies, what? A living sacrifice. You know what? Sometimes it's hard to show up for church. Sometimes, I've got to be honest with you, in light of the mercies of God, to me it's no sacrifice at all. But the reality is in life that we live, sometimes it's difficult. And I, I suppose that could be uh, construed as a sacrifice, as a type. But the reality is, coming to church, we don't have to. Praise God, we get to. Amen? I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, you present your bodies a 
living sacrifice. What he did for us, this is what we ought to do for him. Aren't you glad he didn't ask you to die for him? He's just asking you to live for him. Amen? And before we trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, what were we doing? We're running around doing what our body wanted to do, the sinful pleasures and, and purposes. We're using our body for those things. But after we belong to him, what happens? A change takes place. Our heart's desire takes place. All of a sudden now we don't want to do what we want to do. We, want, we do what he wants to do or he, what he wants us to do. So the Lord Jesus gave his all in his death. Shouldn't we give our all in our life? Amen. That's what he's asking. I beseech you, I beg you, church, look. By the mercy, look at the mercies of God. For 11 chapters he's talked about it. Based on that, present, show your bodies as a living sacrifice. So just as the Lord took upon himself a fleshly body in, in, in order that he could accomplish God's will on earth, uh, that is what really what Christmas is all about, amen. We just, we just celebrated that. So we must yield our bodies, amen, to the Lord Jesus Christ so that he might continue God's work through us. Remember in the garden when Jesus prayed, he said, God, if it be possible, I don't want to do this. But not my will, but thy will be done. Romans 6, 13 says, Neither yield ye your members as instruments, what's your members, your body, as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those who are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. In other words, everything you are and everything you have ought to be used for the holy purposes of God. Amen? I think about Isaac. He willingly put himself on that altar. You remember, how old was Abraham when Isaac was born? Remember? How old was Sarah? Way, we're talking 100 years old. Okay, uh, any strong teenager could have overcome a 100-year-old man. So what did he do? He submitted to God's will and his father's will, Abraham, and laid on that altar, and he would have died in obedience to what? In, to God, in obedience to God's will, because it's God's will that you honor and obey your parents. He would have died, but the Lord sent a ram to take his place, amen? But think about this. Isaac died just the same, and here's why he died. Because he died to self. And he laid down, and even though God did not have Abraham take Isaac's life, Isaac died just the same because he said, I'm laying my life down. If this is what God wants, then I willingly give it. And when he got off that altar, you know what Isaac was? He was a living sacrifice to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And of course, the Lord Jesus Christ is the perfect illustration of a living sacrifice. Amen. Why? Because he actually died as a sacrifice in obedience to the Father's will. But you know what? He arose again. Amen. <laughs> Up from the grave he arose. And today he's in heaven, what? As a living sacrifice. And when the devil comes knocking... Hey, let me tell you about old Rick, God. Jesus stands up and goes, Father, it's under the blood. I paid for it. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, you present your bodies a living sacrifice. By the way, that, that verb present is, is written in the original Greek in a way that means to present once and for all. It means... To yield yourself once and for all. It commands us to take, listen, to make a definite commitment of our body to the Lord. Here, here, here it is. It's just like a bride and a bridegroom make those wedding vows in a commitment to one another and it says, till death do us. In other words, for good, the good, the bad, and the ugly, there we are, amen? Guess what? Today... My wife and I celebrate 31 years ago today we stood right here on this platform and said, I do. 
to God and to each other. Amen. Give her a hand. <laughs> She's put up with me for a long time. 31 years. You know, I, they talk about the silver, gold, and, pl and pl whatever, platinum. I don't know. It ought to be bigger than that. You know, 25 ought to be the platinum now, I think. But you know what? It, when you come as a true Christian, you give complete dedication of your life to the Lord. You've signed over the title deed of your life to God. Why? For eternal life. Amen? Christians who, who fail in their lives, let me tell you, they're the ones that fail at the altar. And they refuse to surrender themselves completely to Christ. Well, I want to give this part, but I'm keeping this part. And it don't work that way, my friend. When we, when we turn over the keys of our life to the Lord, it's got a key to every room and every crevice and every part of our life. Amen? Paul says, yield your bodies. What is he speaking of? Your total personality. You see, your body is an instrument through which we express ourselves. Amen? And everybody has their... Uh, I, I noticed Landon got a haircut this morning. And, and he's got cool, curly red hair. I think that's awesome. And he's had it since he's a little bitty boy. And he had it long, and I think that's cool. And he's got it a little shorter now. kind of looks like a mushroom on top, you know. But No, I think it's neat. But what is that? And I remember when I was a teen, I had a mullet. And you go, a mullet? Oh, yeah, I had a mullet. That was in style back then. It's kind of coming back around now. But the uh, Pat Benatar spike on the top hasn't come back yet. I gave my sister a haircut one time. And, of course, back then they wore the racing stripes, you know, the makeup right here the dark eyeliner and stuff, and the blues, and, and I cut her hair, and I spiked her on top. She looked just like Pat Benatar, that rock singer. She never let me cut her hair again. No, she actually did let me cut her hair again. But anyway, our bodies are an expression of what's going on in our heart and mind, right? And what we think about ourselves. And what we think God thinks about us. And it includes the mind, the will, the emotions... And in a spiritual sense, it's how God can use all of that for His glory. We're told in the, war, the Word of God that what? We're to glorify God in our bodies. And so 1 Corinthians 6, 19 says what? Paul's writing to the church at Corinth. Let me tell you, you know, every church has problems, but the church at Corinth was messed up. You read the history of that church or just read Paul's two epistles to Corinth, they were messed up. They had some crazy things going on in there. But here's what he says, what? Don't you know? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you? Which ye have of God? And ye are not your own. What does he say right there? Everybody's going, well, my body, my choice. Well, if you're a Christian, it's not your body. It's God's body. I don't know about you, but I think it's a pretty fair deal. Eternal life and eternal salvation, and he gets this body? <laughs> yeah, I got a good deal. What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own. You don't own you anymore if you're a Christian. Why? Verse 20, For ye have been bought with the price, therefore glorify God in your body, and in your spirit, which are God's, which belong to God. Amen? Philippians 1.20 According to my earnest expectation and hope, that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by my life or by my death. I love that Corey Ashbery songs talks about Christ be magnified in my life. And I love that song. I love Corey Ashbury. He writes the most practical, down-to-earth songs that just pierce the heart. And I've never heard somebody write or sing where I'm at in my Christian life so, many, so often as the songs he's written. But he writes that song, Christ be magnified. And you know what? That ought to be our heart's desire every day. That God would use... Well, we talked at Christmas about the light. And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world. But men love darkness rather than light. Not if they're a Christian. As a Christian, we don't want to be in the dark. We want to be in the light. And we are that light. And we're to share it. How? Through our 
bodies. So true dedication to God is seen in our presenting, notice it, our showing up and presenting our bodies, our mind, our will, our emotions completely to God once and for all, but then again every day. Amen? You know, Paul uh, talked about that presentation once and for all when he said, Lord, what will you have me to do? But then he said this, he said this, I die daily. He said, I bring myself under submission, my body under submission, lest after I preached, I myself become a castaway. Amen? What's he saying? I can't walk around and talk like I'm a Christian and, and, and profess the Lord Jesus Christ and then live like a, 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 a Satanist. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. A living sacrifice. So the first step on the path to being better in 2024 is what? A genuine salvation, but number two, a giving demonstration. And I want to close this morning with this, and we'll finish next week. And I've said this so many times. And this applies not only to your money, your finances, but more than that, to your life. I'm going to tell you right now, God don't need our money. And what Brother Wade prayed is proof. The fact that this church is still going on with a small congregation, and with this facility, is amazing. But it's just through the giving, faithful giving of God's people and their sacrifices that, and listen, if you're a part of this church, that's, that's part, part of what you do and who you are in this church. But I, I, I get it. I know out there in the world there's takers and there's givers. And some people it's all about gimme, 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 what can I get? What can I can do to connive people out of something so I get something for free? I see it all the time. We have people come in, you know, uh, and I've seen it over the years, and they come up with some big story and it's trying to get that money out of your pocket, okay? And so I understand that, the, what's going on out there. But God don't need to, and he, God shouldn't have to try to convince you of your giving, amen, a giving demonstration. And that should be not only, I call it your ATM, your attendance, your tithes, and your ministry. You ought to show up. You ought to give the tithe, which is the tenth, and then offerings. There are special needs that you ought to give to, and me and my wife give. And I'm going to say something here, and, and I'm not saying it to, to be prideful. I'm not saying it to... Uh, to say, look at me, because I, I'll be the first one. All glory goes to God. I'm the least of these, as Paul said. We're $2,000 ahead right now on our tithes so that this church can continue. And that's okay. You know why we do that? Because we love this place. And more than that, we love the Lord Jesus. And here's what I was going to say, because Brother Reed used to say it all the time. You can give and not love, but you cannot love and not give. And he said it like this, you can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving. And one of the first steps that Paul is talking about right here, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, look what God did for you that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. And remember your bodies, it's not just this physical layer of, of lump of fat and whatever else it is. It's your mind, your will, your emotions, your body, every part of your being. And my friends, we are body, soul, and spirit. And in every area of that, we ought to be living sacrifices unto God based on what He did for us. Amen? We ought to do it with joy. The Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. You know what that word is in the, in the original language? Hilarious. I watch people come and give. they got a big smile on their face, and it's a joy for them to give. And let, let me tell you something. You might not have a lot of money. You might be in a bad situation right now. But there's no reason that every person here shouldn't put a dollar or, or $2 in the offering plate every Sunday. Just because you got to set in heat and light and comfort, that alone, I mean, you can't go anywhere now for free. But people come to the church every week and think it's a free show. 
and they take, 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 take. Well, I'm going to tell you, the first, the first example that you've experienced a genuine salvation is this, what is it? A giving demonstration. Your life is marked by giving. Amen? You know why? Because Christ has not finished giving. And Christ still wants to give through you to continue His work. Amen? And so this morning, do you want to be better? I do. Amen? I want to be better in 2024. I want to be a better uh, husband. I want to be a better father. I want to be a better pastor. But more than all of that, I want to be a better Christian for Christ. Amen? I want to know Him more. I want to understand His Word more. And I want to let it shine. My wife bought me a devotional book, and I'm so glad she did. Because I was thinking about this, and of course I'm, I'm so busy, and she laid it on my, my desk in my office at the house, and, and I, I can't wait to get in it. And, and, and have a, a regular appointment and commitment with God every day. Now I go throughout my day from start to finish at different times, working on worship music or working on uh, verses or reading passages and, and various things like that. But I'm glad to have something intentional that I can do. And, and you know what? If you want to be better spiritually, get into the Word, amen? And if you need somebody's devotional guide to help you, then praise God. Body, soul, and spirit. A giving demonstration. Your attendance. You know what? Next week is going to be the first Sunday of 2024. You know what you have the chance to do? Have perfect attendance all through the year. Okay? You do. And you might have a vacation. That's fine. I took a vacation last year, first time in a long time. And I, I mean, we missed a couple of Sundays. We were uh, in Florida. I think I was maybe sick once or twice. I can't remember. And that, those things happened to all of us. But, but like this morning, I'm not feeling good. But you know where I am? I'm right where God called me to be. You know what? Attendance. I'm presenting my body a living sacrifice this morning. And so are you. Amen? Then my tithe. I'm going to finish out the year strong today, tithing. And, and there's many ways you can give today. You can give here at the altar as an act of worship. You can put it in the box at the hall. You can use the little QR code back there and, and give through your digital means or whatever you want to do. You can give through PayPal online. I mean, there is every avenue to give today, but not just of your money, but, but also your ministry. There's all kinds of things that have to be done around here. And I've got to be honest with you, I call them Brother Willie and Brother Jeff and my own sons and Brother Copeland and, and, and you know, uh, and, and there's, a, there's a few others. Uh, I'm just talking about the men right now and they are Brother Jeff and, and they take care of things around the building, outside the building that not only can I not physically do some of these things, I don't have time to do some of these things. And, and these guys step up and our ladies. One of the things I said to Sarah Smith and Miss V at Christmas time, thank you so much. You're like our... You're like, uh, you're like Aaron and her holding up Moses' arm. And, and they are such a blessing. And there's others. You know, Miss Jennifer, she, she's been a member of our church less than a year. She joined this year. And she's already teaching a class. And Miss Brandy's teaching a class. Amen? And that's what it's all about. And we've got, we've got our, our elderly folks that, that, that bring desserts to pastor. They're helping me get better, right? <laughs> No, but everybody has their part to play, amen, in the church. Why? Because we are, we are the body of Christ at Liberty Baptist, jo you know, joints fit together. And if we're missing the arm, then we're missing the ability to do what God wants us to do. If we're missing a leg, we're missing the ability to do what God wants us to do. If we're missing a foot, or if it's injured and it's spiritually, you know, messed up, then we're going to have a problem as a church, Amen. So this giving demonstration, we each have our ways. Now the basics is we got to show up, we got to tithe. Don't and I don't want to ever hear you say I can't afford to tithe. Let me tell you, you can't afford not to tithe. You want everything you have to be cursed by God. Read Malachi three. You can give, or you can rob God. You rob God, you're going to be cursed. And that's going to be your car. That's going to be your refrigerator, your house, your health, and everything else. And not only that, uh, the devil's going to jump on you. 
God said, you give, not only will I bless you and give to, back to you more than you can even hold, but I'll rebuke the devil on your behalf. If that was the only part of that that he was doing, praise God for that, amen? Keep the devil away from my home, I'm, I'm in. Amen? So evidence that you've had a, a genuine salvation is that there's a giving demonstration in your life. Let's stand with our heads bowed and eyes closed. Father, thank you so much for these wonderful people that I call my church family and my friends. And I'm so grateful, Father, for their faithfulness as we close out 2023. Lord, that we ask this morning that we would not leave this, this year, this year in the past, without every person under the sound of my voice knowing that they have been truly saved. That like that little boy at the gun store, I gave my life to Jesus Christ. And if there's anybody here under the sound of my voice that can't go back to that day, that moment in time, like that little boy when he walked down the aisle and told the pastor, I want to give my life to Jesus, then Lord, help them to do it today. Help them not to go into 2024 in the morning at, 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 at when, the, when the clock turns, 12.01. Help them not to go into that new year unsaved. And then, Father, for those that are saved, Lord, help them to know the Word of God, to know that the key to being better and having the, the best life that they can have right now on this earth is simply by not only being saved, but by giving. We cannot, I say it all the time to folks, you'll never outgive God. And that's what my dad used to say, Lord, and you know it. And he's gone on to his eternal reward now, and I can't imagine how great it must be. I, I stand ashamed probably in the shadows of great men like Jack Ross and Al Withington and these great men of God that have gone on to be with the Lord and, and to know what their reward must be in heaven for what they did. God, I want to be better. I want to be like them in their level of faithfulness and commitment and trust for you. Father, have your will in the, this invitation. Lord, if there's somebody here that's not a member of this church, but they want to join uh, and not just, not just be here, but to be a part, uh, Lord, they can join either through statement of faith, saying they've been saved and scripturally baptized. They can transfer their letter from another Baptist church of like faith and practice, or they can be baptized into the body here. But Lord, whatever the, whatever the, the need this morning, I pray that your perfect will will be accomplished in Jesus' name. Amen. With heads bowed, eyes closed. Some